everyone. Welcome back to the CCO Follow Podcast. Uh, over the course of this month, we've been talking Advent. We went through hope, faith, peace, and joy. We had Christmas. We celebrated. I hope you guys had a great Christmas. Uh, but now it is still December, but it's post-Christmas, and we look forward to the new year. And And I think many of us as people, we've always just kind of, you know, Oh, Christmas is over. I'm looking forward to the new year. Mm-hmm. I start some things and do things a little bit different, all these yeah. different things. But what do we do with this whole month of Advent that we covered? What do we do with all of these you know, wonderful truths that we've learned and, and celebrated? Should we carry those out? I think we should. Um, and so today, we really wanted to focus on post-Christmas but keeping Christ at the forefront of our minds. How do we do that going on every single day? Doesn't matter what holiday or what celebration, how do we keep Christ forefront? So um, today we have Randy Thomas on. Randy, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Um, And yeah, we're just gonna kind of jump in. And I'm curious for you guys, this is the first little, little tidbit here. What, looking forward to New Year's, it's coming up, Jan 1. Do we have any New Year's resolutions? Randy, do you have any New Year's resolutions? I always have New Year's resolutions. Okay. I never talk about them. Oh, uh, and here it is publicly. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so I, I have personal resolutions, but um, I don't make them public. Sure. Um, just to probably fear anxiety. I, I know that I won't um, meet my own expectations. Sure, mm-hmm. oh yeah. So um, don't want others to have expectations that I know I won't be able to fulfill myself. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one way to do it for sure. I, I'm the same way. I, I think I... I'm very soft. I ride loose in it. You know, I think, ah, oh, I might as well. If it's you know, January, I might well think of things. But over the course of time, I think, like many, it just kind of fizzles. Travis, what about you? I ironically don't set news resolutions, even though, like, I love the topics of, like, habits and routines sure. and goal setting. And so I've read plenty about setting news resolutions, and I just don't. I and I think we talked about this on a previous episode where it's like if I want to do something and it occurs to me like you know in November I'd rather start then and not wait until New Year's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like yeah. otherwise all the the gusto goes out <laughs> and so yeah. and all the excitement and so that's just me. I, I don't usually set them. And I think that's actually a good. Yeah, we'll pretend. I think that's so. a good thing <laughs> because I think so often we jump to the next thing, mm-hmm. like oh Christmas is over, New Year's. Oh New Year's goes by, you go through January, and it's the next thing over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that honestly takes away, I think, from the Lord's presence, at least in my own Mm -hmm. heart. I I can get distracted. Mm -hmm. So uh, how, yeah, Randy, how do you go into this season where the world is saying next thing, next thing, next thing, to to doing the next thing, but keeping Christ centered. What's it look like for you? For me, uh, just being resolved to please Jesus in all things. Mm -hmm. I mean, try to Mm -hmm. keep it simple. For me, um, I try to break things down to simple things. Complexity um, gives me an excuse most of the time to not follow through. So I try to keep things very, very simple. I don't remember when it was, but there was a time that I did resolve one thing. Um, and that is just to try to, when I'm reading the scriptures, try to determine what were the original recipients of that, you know, trying to, yeah. to, to understand. And one of the things that perplexed me at that time is, is the name Christ. And it's, I'm glad that we're having this conversation around Christmas because we proclaim Jesus as King all mm-hmm. the time, mm-hmm. but, um, kind of this, this conundrum that, in the English translation, um, Christ, we haven't really translated that into English. We still use Christ, the mm. Greek form. Yeah. So, you know, Christ is just the, is just in Greek, Christus, mm-hmm. the Greek translation of the anointed one or king. Yeah. Wow. Um, and so one of the things that I resolved is rather than using Christ to say like a personal pronoun, mm-hmm. using it as a title. Yeah. So when I read scripture and when I talk about Jesus, rather than using the term Christ, which is just a Greek form of the name king, yeah. I use king. Um, because I, I always want to be focusing that 
you know, he is my king. You know, he is, he's my sovereign. I kind of have dual citizenship, one in the kingdom of God and, mm-hmm. and one as a citizen of the United States. So that's kind of going back to kind of one of those things that yeah. I resolved um, and kind of a, a quirk. You know, I remember my, you know, talking to my dad. I've had an opportunity to talk to my dad. I use the, the term king. I don't use that. You know, we have Christianese that yeah. when we're right. speaking with brothers, we want yeah. individuals to feel comfortable we want to communicate for, to understand yes and so yeah. for me to use the term king in lieu of christ sometimes can be you know an unusual but yeah but that's one of the things that i resolve to try to determine it when i'm speaking and and, re- and you know reading to really bring into you know the vocabulary not christianese but really the meaning of that particular word and so that's that's an important one and and one of the things that i think is great about this christmas season uh, that we really proclaim the king Mm -hmm. um on a regular basis and and at times i think that we get in and we just say jesus christ like that's his last name yeah when it's really his title it's his position yeah Mm -hmm. um the the first um you know century church you know they they proclaim king Mm -hmm. i i often contemplated you know well why why didn't we translate that into from Christ into King or the yeah. Anointed One, which is actually the the English meaning of that. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe the, <laughs> the translators, the first translators, you know, were working on behalf of King James, right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe they didn't want to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, at that time establish that. But anyway, that a bit of a tangent. But for me, um, you know, just always believing Jesus is king, and I want yeah. to please him in all that I do. Well, and it mm-hmm. affects your, I mean, when you address somebody, it, it affects you, even in your subconscious, you know, because mm-hmm. there's this authority that we all kind of think, like, if I'm talking to my boss, and I know, okay, this is my boss, mm-hmm. it, something different, the way that, you know, I interact with that, I you know, it's a different, it's just different. It's not more or less respect, but it's just different, and so, yeah. so I think... When you keep that forefront of understanding, it's like I'm talking to King Jesus. Then yeah. this is it. I don't know. It helps. I don't know. That's a good. I, I'm really glad you brought that up because I don't think like that, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to now because that's really important. Yeah. Um, Travis, what about you? How do you avoid the trap of just going to the next thing? Well, you know, I think uh, it was interesting you talking about like that that greater vantage point of like Christ as King, and um, you know it makes me think of those of you who are like into GTD getting things done with David Allen. Okay. There's a few laughing. Um, so he talks about horizons of focus and, um, he talks about, you have task level and you have project level, and then you have like 10,000 feet, 30,000 feet, you know, your life purpose goal, stuff like that. And, um, I think sometimes when we are jumping to the next thing, like we have, you know, all of Christmas, the New Year's resolution, everyone thinks about essentially these projects of their life. They're like, oh, I'm going to hit this and hit this and do this. And this is, you know, my, my plan for the next year and how I'm going to execute it. And we don't go high enough. Hmm. Like in some ways, you know, I think, I think we should probably review our lives a little more often than once a year. But even when we do, we should review them a little bit higher scope. You know, I think part of what helps you, um, because to a certain extent, you have to look to the next thing. Like you can't live in the past. Yep. You have to, you know, if you never look up and say, where do I want to be in six months, a year, you're just going to end up in crazy, you know, crazy town. Yeah. You're not going to ever change and improve in different ways. Um, but you also can't... Very just, sad life. Very yeah. sad life. <clears throat> but you can't look up um, in such a small way. I feel like we just look up just enough to be like, oh, outside my day-to-day, oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. Oh, outside my day-to-day, I want to read my Bible every day. Oh, outside my day-to-day, I want to, you know, have a better family life. We just look barely high enough hmm. to like get beyond day-to-day and then we just rush on instead of looking even higher and being like, okay, what's what am I doing in my life? And not like in this really big existential way, but in this way of recognizing like, well, Jesus is king. So yeah. how does that matter for where I work, you know, who I'm married to, you know, or maybe who I'm dating or that in fact I'm single or if I have kids or not, um, you know, the things that I, I'm even thinking about doing, mm-hmm. how do they fall under the umbrella of Jesus is my king, he's Lord of my life and I'm following him. And so this next year, how do I follow him in this area? And I yeah. think in some ways, you know, that, that po- causes us to pause a little bit more instead of just go, well, I'm going to do this thing. So I'm going to start in January 1st and I'm going to do it awesome. You know, and it allows us to instead say, oh, I'm going to do these things. Okay. Let me just double check. Does this align with 
you know, light of eternity? Does this yeah, align with the, what God desires for me? And I think that helps us pause a little bit more in a more meaningful way. Yeah. Instead of just a pausing enough to plan, it's like pausing enough to actually like recognize who is in control and to like follow him yeah. instead of mm-hmm. just going a direction. Yeah. yeah I, I, as you guys are talking, it, it just it draws me back to this. I think it should be the word for the year. New year coming up. But this next year, or this last year. Uh, you can't do the same year twice. Well, the last <laughs> year come and gone. Let's put it for the new year. I think intentional. We talk about it all the time in mm-hmm. the podcast. But I'm just thinking about what you guys are saying and what it is. All it is is just it's basically being intentional. Mm-hmm. It's being intentional yes. about the truth that we read in Christ. Like this, he is King. Our lives are different than what they were because of this this king in our lives reigning. So how, how can we be intentional about following through that? I think that's for me, like I think of when you were talking about, um, the, that guy, his, you know, think bigger. Yeah. Like, like uh-huh. I think about kind of counterculturally, I think differently because there's this book it's called atomic habits. Yes. That's very popular. James Clear, Great book. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think like there's some things in it that make total sense. But I think when we're talking about, Jesus we're talking about not human level but but God like God the creator level yeah I think that's where we we can actually focus on those those let's let's have bigger intentionality and think bigger here Mm -hmm. because I have I have Christ you know Mm -hmm. and so I have the king yes and so I just think about at least for my life I, I really want to listening to you guys talk it's kind of forming what I want to do but I really want to make sure that I'm putting, creating habits that draw me back. Not necessarily mm-hmm. just good habits, but habits that like almost like reminders yeah. that draw me back to being intentional about following Christ. Because I, that's that's the I, that's the thing, you know. That's what we are supposed to be doing. Well, that's the beauty of where you have a lot of Christian holidays. You have you know Advent leading up to Christmas. If you follow it really liturgically, you have the candles that you light. And I don't know some people, it's like you know they say a prayer when they light the can- candle, and they you know light it morning and night, and mm. they you know stuff it out in the middle of the day so no fire while you're at work. But you know there's there's those routines that build in the routine of you know the classic yeah. one of praying before you go to sleep. Like that's that's a great routine to be in that like recenters you on yeah. where you should be. The routine of maybe having your daily devotion in the morning or or different routines like that. Praying honestly before meals is just a routine. Yep. And as long as it doesn't become rote, as long as it still remains purposeful, um, it's good. Yeah. It helps recenter you throughout your day. Yeah. What what are what are some do you have any routines? Yeah, I have two routines and it's interesting, Travis, that's a, a great point. I, I grew up an awful lot on, you know, have this routine, get up early, mm-hmm. have your devotion, mm. um, have your prayer time and and I'm my wife is great of almost forty years. She's up at five o'clock, doesn't matter. If she goes to bed at two o'clock, she's up at five o'clock wow. and she's got wow. an hour, an hour that's and a half with her time. That is it is. It's very impressive. It's a great I'm tired model. Just it's, thinking about that, but that's yeah, really yeah, impressive. It's, it's it's a great model, but but I'm different. I have a couple things. One, um I have a really difficult time falling asleep. Yeah. And um and so one of the things that I found, I've given myself the freedom to read my Bible at night. Mm-hmm. And I find that it brings me peace. And at times I would feel guilty because I would either doze off or my mind would go somewhere else. But I've discovered that that's just a gift from God. He allows mm-hmm. me his scripture is such that I can read it. I can have enough peace to go to sleep. My mind continues to try to solve the next day's problems or anticipate what's going on. And so there's, there's you know, that just bringing my Bible to bed with me mm-hmm. and just reading not necessarily intending to meditate, yeah. but just to um, reconnect with my king, that one that I'm in covenant yeah. relationship with. Mm-hmm. I mean, my relationship with Jesus ought to be like my relationship with my wife, yeah. right? It's one that I am, uh, that, that uh, you know, I'm inputting into it, you know, every day. So at night, um, I, I read my Bible. And I just read from Genesis through Revelation. And when I'm done, I just start over. Yeah, and I've done cool. that over and over and over for 20 years. So I've had the opportunity to read through the Bible on multiple occasions. Yeah. Um, not with a commentary, not with those, just simply reading God's word. Yeah. And then in the morning, I pray. 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I find that I need that to reset myself to mm-hmm. get ready for work. Um, and, and it's, and for me, it's just tuck a couple of pillows under my belly, curl up on my bed. Um, and I, and I start with, um, kind of the Lord's prayer as, Mm -hmm. as a template, you know, growing up, you know, my mom and dad would be beside the bed at me and say, okay, say you're now I lay me down to sleep. And, you know, by the time I was, you know, pre-teens, I'd, you know, memorized the Lord's prayer. Right. And so that was kind of the rote um, that I had, um, that I'd go to bed at night, but finding now prayer and just, you know, how can I pray? How, you know, one of two things happens either. I'm like, I don't know what to pray about, Mm -hmm. or I have such a long list that I would never be able to stop. Right. Yeah. So using the Lord's prayer is kind of this model. I find that it has categories and sections Mm -hmm. as I'm bringing, um, those words to my mind that the spirit is also bringing either people or concepts or, or Mm -hmm. individuals and just starting the day. Um, I, I have what many would be considered maybe a, a stressful position. I in supervise a team of 120 to 150 individuals that have Mm -hmm. different, um, you know, come to work with different experiences and backgrounds. And so trying to manage that in a peaceful and and loving way, I have to start the day, Mm -hmm. um, in prayer. Uh, Otherwise the rest of my day is just really, um, Mm. offset. And, and I think thankfully, you know, growing up in a Christian home where, you know, prayer, you, you prayed every day, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, I, I prayed, you know, before I went to sleep, my parents, you know, would be in there. And that was one of those things that you just did it. All right. Even if you didn't want to do it, you know, you, you did it by routine. I think those are some of those great advantages that I had growing up in a Christian family where those were just wrote, you just did Mm -hmm. it. And so now it's like, you, you can't not do it. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so I think it's just getting in these routines so that suddenly you, you just, you don't know why you're doing it, but you, you just do it because that's what you do. Yeah. 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 I, th- I think it definitely is like a, a great, what you're saying, like starting with the Lord's prayer, because it's going to focus your, your thought and, and not that, not that the prayer can be, well, maybe it can. I think, I think prayer can sometimes be, in a maybe coming from uh, i don't know how to say it but i guess from okay in my example sometimes i'll have seasons where i'll realize i'm doing a lot of talking to god and not doing a lot Mm -hmm. of listening or i'm doing a lot of asking and not a lot of thanking Mm -hmm. and so i think when you know if you take the lord's prayer for example like jesus listed it out hey this is this is kind of how you should pray and if you take that as you know it starts out with giving him the glory, giving him the praise mm-hmm. yep. and thanking him. And then, you know, so I think that is a good thing. You know, if, if it's a good routine to have, I think sometimes, because all, all I want routine to do is draw me back into, into thinking about Jesus and yeah. living in a way in accordance with, with him. And mm-hmm. I think like routines for myself, you know, I, I uh, if I don't, you know, read in the morning or, you know, read and pray. Cause, cause that's, I do both. Cause you know, um, but if I don't do that, I, I feel frantic throughout my day. And mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think that it's, this is you not frantic. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it Just was imagine Sunday. what it would be. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I think, I think, um, for me, yeah, it's like if I'll get frantic and I don't think that that's, um, like, I think, Sometimes you're just not going to have time to do it and mm-hmm. you don't have to feel it's not like it's you will feel frantic if you don't do this. Yeah. But I oftentimes do if I if I'm just not doing it and it's and I I miss I feel like I'm missing being in relation. I know he's closer than my skin, but it it just doesn't the way that I interact with others in my world, you know what I mean? It mm-hmm. just doesn't I don't know. Yeah. Well, and you know, there's certainly if if you don't you know, read your Bible one morning. It's not like that morning is going to suddenly be just exactly. wasted yeah, and terrible. Exactly. But I think there's something beautiful about um, remembering because that that should help us remind us why we even do it to begin with. Because there's people who I'm sure are you know just going about their day and they're just like, well, I just read it. Yeah, didn't care. <laughs> like a bunch of genealogy. Yep. Who knows? I, ch- I checked there's that like, off my list. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, I think you could have just as much um, 
moment to pause. It's like, oh, I forgot to read. Let me just like pause two minutes and just think about verses that I know. Yeah. Think about like truths oh, that good. I know. Yeah. And um, I think that um, helps recenter us more than anything. Um, you know, I had a friend when I worked at Starbucks. He was um, uh, previously a, a missionary for 20 years in Thailand and he, he worked at Starbucks the same time I did in Florida. And one of the things he did um, was he had a, uh, a, st- uh, a timer or a, a timer on his watch. And um, it would just go off. Um, at first, it started like every. Hmm. Um, I think he started doing it like every like ten minutes at first, and it just reminded him to include Jesus in his day and to wow. like remember him. And then as he got better at that, he'd extend it to twenty minutes, and then an hour, and then like you know until he didn't need the timer anymore. Wow. Um, but I think you know, in some ways that's more beneficial than just having condensed, okay, I did my 15 minutes of Jesus. Yeah. Now I'm going to move on with my life, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, not saying you shouldn't do devotions, not saying like, but I think sometimes we get so hyped on that where it's like, oh, I didn't do it. And now my day is completely gone. And it's yeah. like, you realize no, you just, Jesus wants to be throughout the entire day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you can start right now. Yeah. yeah. Like don't, um, I guess what I'm saying is like when you miss days of a certain routine or something like that, don't count it as counted like lost. against you. Yeah. Yeah. And like you can, pick up exactly where you left off and, and keep that going. Yeah. Right. I, I, uh, it kind of reminds me of like how, some of the way, like the way that I read the Bible is, uh, not, not every time I'm looking like you, I'm not looking through, um, you know, like a study Bible or something. A lot of times I do because I'm curious, but when I, no matter what I, when I start, no matter what I'm reading, you know, if it's the Bible, I'm going to pray beforehand mm-hmm. and I ask God, you know, soften my heart, open up my eyes, allow me to see what you'd have for me to see. And, and the reason why I do that is because I want to, I, I, I am refocusing myself and seeing, okay, I'm not doing this to check things off. I'm not doing this just to have knowledge. I want to do this because I want to, I want to be like almost an investment into my relationship with you. Mm -hmm. And so I think that has helped me. I actually just started doing that, um, like a year or so ago, but it, it really has, I feel like transformed the way that I read. And, and it's to me, sometimes I'll still read something and I just won't understand it in the moment, but I'll be thinking about it through my day. And Mm -hmm. it's like the Lord works, you know, the spirit kind of works in, in fun ways where, you know, something might happen. It's like, Oh, I just read that. I didn't understand it until just now, you know? And I think that's really cool. But again, it just shows like the intentionality of, no matter what we're doing. Randy, you mentioned you have a very stressful job mm-hmm. um, working with so many people. How how do you keep the Lord focused uh, or how do you keep focused on the Lord in the middle of that job? Well, you know, one of the things that that just just thinking about the character of Jesus you know, and that he came as a servant, Mm -hmm. right? Even though I have a title of an executive director, right? I want to make sure that I'm modeling Jesus. I work for a public school district. Mm -hmm. So the availability to, or really the ability to be overt um, is, is difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so, you know, how can I do that? It's by modeling, right? And so I recognize that even though I have a title and I have authority, really, if I want to model Jesus, I want to be a servant, mm-hmm. right? And so I, all day, my focus is, you know, how, how can I make those that work with me, those that are on my team successful? How can I serve them yeah. rather than them serving me? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and that's going to be one of those continual focuses because that's not human, mm-hmm. right? But I, what I have discovered that, um, <laughs> If I want people to conform to me, mm-hmm. then I'm going to be frustrated. That's where yeah. the anxiety goes up oh, because yeah. really I don't, as a human, have the ability to transform anybody. Yeah. Only the Holy Spirit does, right? So it's my job just to be obedient to mm-hmm. the Spirit. And um, even though that's my position, it's a matter of how can I model, yeah. right? How can I model? Because I can't be overt in my speech. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I better be overt in my behavior. Yeah. And, uh, and thankfully for the Holy Spirit, um, and, uh, you know, God gives us grace, gives me grace. And I find that when, um, I'm trying to take over that role, uh, uh and demand that people conform to, mm. um, to my image, um, that, 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 that would be a terrible thing. You know, mm-hmm. it would be a terrible thing that if I was successful, um, 
influencing individuals to conform to my image, um, they wouldn't be conforming to the image of Jesus, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. And and that's, that's really, really good. that's really that. my goal. I find when I'm stressed, it's because I'm wanting my will to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and so that's that's one of those things. Just one of those those focuses. Um, there was a there was a situation in my life where um, where God just gave so much grace to me. Um, that it's something I, I, I can never forget. I mean, I, my youngest daughter, Olivia, um, had leukemia when she was young. She had oh, wow. a, a very slim chance of survival. And um, it was interesting. So my wife was in the hospital with her full time um, for about a year. And I was home um, with our three um, older children at that time. And it was interesting that God gave grace in different ways. For my wife, she was convinced 100% that um, our daughter Olivia would be would be healed. For me, I was prepared. I said, God, I know that you're going to take her home because you're protecting her from something else that's going to go mm -hmm. on in this life. And so even though the grace that God gave was different for my wife and for myself, um, it was peace, mm -hmm. right? And I, and, and so that's one of those things that just transforms me that, you know, I, I can be thankful for that time. I mean, so God restored Olivia. Wow. Um, she's a healthy, beautiful 24 year old now. Wow. Um, but there are times where I can recall the anxiety of that particular oh, yeah. experience in my life. And suddenly that anxiety will trigger in me, you know, you're not focusing the right place. God yeah. mm. has the grace in whatever the circumstance that you're in, and it'll just require me to refocus. And yeah. so that's a, that was an experience that, you know, many would say oh, that I'd never want to go through that. Um, I would never want Olivia to go through it again. Mm -hmm. Um, I would gladly go through it again. That was the greatest experience wow. of my life with regards to really understanding some central truths of God and who God is. Yeah, that's uh -huh. really cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's keeping your eyes on Jesus, not on the waves. And that's, yes. you know, whether mm -hmm. those waves be personal or interpersonal or, you know, mm -hmm. workplace or what have you. Right. It's, you know, and, you know, you mentioned in your place of authority, um, you know, you you can appear different. And so that, I'm sure that opens up conversations sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when I was a shift lead at, uh, at Starbucks, uh, you know, I'd have, they, I had a lot of the baristas preferred to work under me other rather than other shift supervisors. Hmm. And, um, I'm sure it had something to do with, you know, the, the graciousness that, or, or love or just general kindness yeah. or forgiveness or things like that, uh, willing to admit fault, um, mm -hmm. things like that. And, um, you don't think it was your jokes? Actually, it was probably that, oh, and yeah. um, but but it led to conversations because um, you know they'd be like you know why does so and so do this and and you do that I'm like well it's because my hope is in Jesus and able mm. to because they brought it up and they were like well why yeah. why is this why I didn't tell you why it is and if you don't want to keep talking about it, we don't have to but if you're interested um, but I think even for those who may be in a different position um, maybe not one of authority even being part of a team. Um, you can still represent Jesus. Yes. And, um, you know, when I was just a barista at that same Starbucks, um, uh, I'd have people when I walk in be like, oh, okay, Travis is here. It's going to like, things are going to get better. And wow. this, which is funny because if you know me, I'm a decently stressed out person by nature. And so it's like, why would Travis bring peace huh. to an area when he's normally the stressed out one. And I think it's, again, those same qualities that Jesus just grows in us and exudes through us is mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. fruits of his spirit. Um, we were talking about habits. That was one of the habits I had when working specifically then is on my way to work. Um, I'd always just ask that God would give me the fruits of his spirit and ask for each one individually and mm -hmm. just be like, I want to represent you here. Yeah. And um, I think sometimes we forget that regardless of position you hold, you can be like Jesus that you can, you know, whether you're servant hearted as the, um, the leader, which is not oftentimes what people see in the world or you're servant hearted as, you know, just one of participants, but you bring about the peace and graciousness and forgiveness that, um, is not oftentimes seen, seen in the world. Yeah. And, um, you can change the, the atmosphere and, and culture of your group. And most importantly, exude that is coming from Jesus, regardless of what position you hold. Yeah. Yes. Isn't it interesting how God designed us that, you know, people we're so influenced and God just says, follow me. Yes. And mm -hmm. we start looking like him and then others see that in us. Yeah. Uh, I think, um, what you brought up kind of, when I was in college, um, it's one of those times, you know, in those places where 
a lot of people, uh, you know, are, are being influenced in, I would say negative ways, but you know, in college you're thinking, Oh, I'm just having fun, partying, doing all these things. And I worked a job. Um, and th- this is kind of an example of like being a witness is, is so huge without you even knowing it. Cause I worked a job and I wasn't, I wasn't ever really overt about it. I never, I didn't necessarily have the same experience you had at Starbucks where people just were like really happy to work with me. <laughs> um, I'm happy to work with you, Arthur. <laughs> it, it's, it's interesting because I remember times where, um, this is really cool. I forget the guy's name, but I'd always work with, with this guy. Uh, he was like on all of my shifts and we kind of became, you know, like work friends and stuff. And every Friday shift, there'd be someone on the team that, Hey, I'm having thrown a party. Like you guys want to come? And it would always be on like Sunday that they would have the party. And I'm like, well, I, I can't like, I can't, sorry. Like I, you know, I'd love to hang out, but I just can't go. I, I have church mm-hmm. and I'd always bring that up. And over the course of, you know, the four months that we were kind of working all together, there, there was that one guy who, who worked with me who finally was like, kind of asked me after someone had said, Hey, I'm having, you know, he said, can I come like on Sunday? And it was like super cool because I had no idea. I wasn't trying to, you know, take him to church with me. Maybe I should have. Um, (laughs) but it was like, just by him hearing that another way of doing things, Mm -hmm. it was like really like it revealed to him because he, he probably had, you know, been raised a certain way and kind of was feeling like he wasn't fitting in. And so it was just really cool to see how, even there's probably a lot of things that I did wrong, but even in that, just by standing apart, Mm -hmm. it it makes a huge difference because people see the Lord, the spirit in you. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a a really cool, and I'm glad you you brought that up. Uh, I'm, I'm curious though, is like, cause in my life I work at a church, but then I come home and that, that home is kind of the, when you work at a church, you're kind of always being bombarded with, you know, focusing on Christ uh, but at home, it's it's different. So I'm curious for you, Randy, taking it from you know your workplace to home. How do you f- keep focused on Christ at home? Well, it's similar, even a little easier. In that is, you know, as a husband and as a father and even as a son, um, you know, the scripture's pretty clear. You know that that I'm to serve and I'm to love. And just to focus on those things, and that mm-hmm. is get the focus off of myself, all right? And uh, in order to do that, we we do need Jesus. And and for me, you know, it goes an awful lot back to, I'm going to say, salvation and, and, and what is salvation, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of times, I think that what stifles us is that we kind of see that, I'm going to say that, that prayer of repentance as salvation, mm-hmm. when in reality that prayer of repentance isn't truly salvation. Mm -hmm. It's just the end of the beginning of salvation. Yeah, it's justification. Yes, it's justification, right? And justification then can go to sanctification and transformation and ultimate glorification. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, recognizing that, that, you know, my Christianity... Um, wasn't salvation's just not you know a transaction a yeah. one-time transaction where we say a prayer of repentance and the pastor gives us a get out of hell free ticket yeah mm. um, that that that's not salvation salvation is a journey mm-hmm. um, and and when we embrace it as a journey mm-hmm. that's when it becomes fun yeah it's it's interesting um, mm. a lot of times we think of um, as heaven as the as the hope of the Christian, mm-hmm. but Scripture says that um, that that's not true. Um, heaven, or I'm going to say the the um, being saved from um, eternal death um, is the hope of a non-Christian. Mm-hmm. Right? The hope of a Christian, according to the Bible, is glorification, mm-hmm. and that is to be transformed to the likeness of Jesus. And so, just recognizing that. Um, when we use the term salvation, when we think of the term salvation, that we don't we don't stop at justification. Mm-hmm. Um, that that once again, it's it's not a transaction. Yeah. Um, that's a, it's not a one time transaction. It's it's a life pursuit. Um, and and that's fun. I think I've been I, so I've been married for almost forty years. It'll not quite thirty. Wow. It'll be thirty nine years shortly. And um, 
And it's what's been fun for me as my relationship with my wife grows deeper and deeper and deeper, you know, every day, every That's year. So cool. I love that. And so it's similar with my relationship with Jesus. I mm-hmm. mean, I, my relationship with Jesus is our relationship with Jesus is a, is a covenant relationship, yeah. right? I mean, I make promises and uh, I keep those promises and, uh, and he's faithful to keeping those promises too. And so the depth of the relationship gets gets deeper and deeper every day it's a journey so part of that i think you know how do i bring that back to my family is just going back to salvation Mm -hmm. what does that mean what does it mean Mm -hmm. to be in jesus um and that gives me the ability to love and uh which and once again it's all about modeling you Mm -hmm. know i mean we jesus has us here in our homes in our families in our church to be a model of who he is Mm -hmm, Uh, a lot of times i think that you know we get ourselves burdened by you know we need to save the world Mm -hmm. and and we need to do that by uh, a lot of actions Mm -hmm. but um but it's really by modeling you know jesus tells us that you know the world will know that we are his by our love and just and just continually focusing on that and that's that self-sacrifice but the great thing is is every time we do that every experience where we sacrifice and we love another. Um, I can't remember a time where it didn't result in me receiving more than I gave. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, and we don't do it for to receive, mm-hmm. but, you know, being 60 plus, you know, I have plenty of time, plenty of experiences to just to just know and to have confidence mm-hmm. that, um, that when I'm obedient to the teachings of Jesus, that I receive. It's not... It's not my intended purpose, but Mm -hmm. it's the outcome. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I like how you said, like, it's a journey. Um, You know, I love the book Pilgrim's Progress. It's such an awesome book. If you ever just want like a a fictional telling that um, really just exudes the like Christian life and like the the growth and the pitfalls you come across along the way. Uh, But the end goal, how we are like pilgrims in this this world that we're traveling through. This isn't our final destination. Uh, But I think remembering that it's a journey helps people also because, you know, I think the longest the average person really thinks like really thinks about is, you know, just that next year. And, um, and that's not long enough to really get a grasp of like, what does it mean to follow Jesus the rest of my life and what direction am I headed? And, um, you know, it's just so important to, you know, I encourage young adults, like what kind of, you know, 80 year old do you want to be? And how do you start walking that direction? And it's not a sprint. It's not like, oh, well, you know, God, make me that person tomorrow. It's like, yeah, God, make me that person over the course of my life. And, all the little, you know, notches in the belt, all the little, uh, you know, things that I do each and every day is dr- just slowly taking me that direction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm walking alongside Jesus. I mean, he doesn't tell us to sprint with him. He tells us to walk with him. Yeah. 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 You mentioned Pilgrim's Progress. I know you have some other books that you are excited to talk about. Maybe we could, before we kind of close out, we'll talk about some of those books. I think maybe you've mentioned one yeah, of, or two of them before. Of them. Um, but, I think it's a good way. Um, I love kind of ending, you know, our conversation with some tangible things that we can go out and, and read or do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. What, what are those books and, and then, you know, why are they so important? Yeah. So two books, one, um, I I like to give a couple just for those who are like, they just like reading lots of books. Yeah. Um, the first one is liturgy of the ordinary, um, by, I can't even pronounce this Tish Harrison Warren. Mm. Um, it, it's a book that uh, is written by someone in a, in a denominational circle, so they're not um, non-denominational. So there's a little bit of uh, you know liturgy <laughs> and liturgy-like things in it. But um, but it was so interesting about the book is how the, uh, she emphasizes uh, putting routines in your day that aren't just the simple okay read your Bible and pray. Yeah. It's like how uh, you know what kind of routines did maybe God build into our life and talking about routines of even like rest and work, talking about routines of uh, different Christian holidays instead of just <clears throat> you know, Chris, uh, Christmas and Easter, um, but all the other Christian holidays and how they are meaningful in uh, what they remind us of, how they lead us closer to Jesus, um, and essentially how to keep your kind of daily, ordinary life focused on Jesus. Even the mundane, just the, you know, the grinding out, I just have to do this work. Yeah. And how does this, you know, glorify Jesus? She kind of talks about stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but the book I really, really liked that I can't recommend enough is called Habits of the Household by Justin uh, Early. And this book is geared towards families, but I've already recommended it personally to multiple single people I know, Mm. um, and just encouraging them saying like, 
if you can look past that, some of it is geared towards a, fam- a classic, you know, family unit. I think the entire book has so many good things to say for individuals. If you, you know, can, you know, take that extra step to apply it to an individual. Um, but it's, it's very good. Just talking about, you know, our daily habits and how we, um, we either can lean into Jesus or lean away from him. Hmm. And it's everything from much like you grew up where he, he actually has a different, um, uh, liturgical, like, uh, saying kind of like a blessing that he, uh, you know, speaks over each of his sons before they go to bed. Um, my family, we've, we've always prayed with our kids and we've, um, like have them thank Jesus for one thing from that day. But, um, in this book, he actually mentioned like, oh yeah, they, they do thank him for something and ask him for help with something. Hmm. And we're like, you know, that's a really easy way. Cause kids, you're kind of training them. So, um, t- for them to be able to say their own prayers, you have to give them parameters and guidelines. Otherwise it just divulges <laughs> into, you know, other things. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just a lot of good, um, a lot of good things in that book, just regarding how you can not just set up your, um, your, uh, moment by moment life, but like, putting those kind of anchor points throughout your day um, and designing them yourself. He talks a lot about how to think through what is going to be most beneficial for me, my contacts. Hmm. Cause when you're single, maybe it's one thing when you're married, it's another, when you have kids, it's another, when you're empty nesters, maybe that changes again. And having kind of that tool set and that mindset of like, I'm going to be proactive with what I do and it's going to be meaningful in it draws me near to Jesus. Yeah. And so both those are really good books. Uh, I I, I want to leave everybody with this kind of thought because you, I, I don't know if she talks about it in the liturgy of of the of the, of the ordinary, mm-hmm. um, but you mentioned like God has designed us in certain habits that we do, and I think about you know Jesus always talks about you know being fed, mm-hmm. getting rest. Mm-hmm. I mean humans, the way that we're designed is we have to eat and then we go to sleep. You know we rest. We need both those things. Maybe just think about that when we're thinking about how we are to live that Christian life too, because that's the same. Mm-hmm. It's the same exact thing. I don't know. I just thought of that, and I figured we I would say that. But thank you so much for coming on, Randy. It was yeah. a pleasure having you. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for watching and listening. Um, as always, uh, please know that every single topic that we cover is going to be uploaded to our website and our resource page. Um, and we're really excited to, to keep moving this year, this mm-hmm. upcoming year with, with, the uh, the next season, so to speak of yeah. the, of the podcast. So, uh, please join us as we continue covering all those different topics and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. As always, God bless. Yep. God bless.